What I saw wasn't human. Oh, my God! <laughs> Very tall. And what's more, it saw me. This thing. This podcast is not safe for work and will feature movie spoilers. It will feature scenes described of a graphic nature. It will contain language which most listeners may find offensive. Welcome to the podcast Under the Stairs. Welcome back to another instalment of Rawhead Rex in PCs. This is a sub-series of the podcast Under the Stairs where we take the movie Rawhead Rex, we split the movie up into five-minute digestible reviewable segments. I uh, then get guests from other podcasts to join me to review those five minutes. The kicker and the twist like we always do on podcasts Under the Stairs, just to complicate things, is that I've put all the five minute segments into your randomizer which has jumbled up the order of its release. So this really is Rawhead Rex in pieces. On this episode the podcaster joining me is none other than me. This is a double Duncan episode, double D in this house and we will be reviewing minutes 55 through 60. This Episode will start at minute 55 with uh, David Duke staring up at the Rawhead Rex stained glass window and we'll finish at minute 60 with an exterior shot of Rawhead Rex rocking a caravan from side to side. And that is your five minute instalment. So 55 through to 60. We ain't wasting any time here ladies and gents. We're getting right into it because whole lot of dialogue in this bit here. Whole lot of dialogue. So it opens with David Duke standing, staring up at the raw head Rex stained glass window. He's looking up from the bottom and as his eyes are trolling up, he sees a red robed person in the stained glass window holding what appears to be a grey stone with light coming out and shining down on it. As we know at the bottom, of the stained glass window, Rawhead Rex is uh, appears to be subdued by said light. So he's trying to piece things together, some clues. Um, if you've listened to, and I don't even know where it's going to drop, it might be after this episode. In the previous five minutes, David Duke has suffered a bit of a tragedy. So um, as he's looking at this particular stained glass window, in the background, the creepy verger is starting to sneak up behind him. And he's watching from afar as David Dukes is holding up a pile of Polaroids he's taken and he appears to be a little lost in thought. Uh, the verger startles him out of his concentration by saying, they buried him alive. <laughs> There's so many bad... I, I apologise to all my listeners here. I'm going to try and... I have to do the accents. I have to do them. Uh, and David Dukes says, what? The verger says, the devil. They put him in the earth deep down. They thought he died. They thought they could forget about him, but the dark ones come back, they always do. And Duke says, this window, what does it mean? And Verger says, it's useless to fight. And Duke says, what does it represent? And the Verger shouts, nothing, the devil is won. And he turns to walk away, but Duke says, none of this fucking grabs him by the collar, pulls him close to him, 
And just as he's doing that, and it looks like the me throw down a little bit here, the Reverend comes into the room and shouts, Declan! And the verger turns round to David Dukes and says, See, you have nothing left to fight with. And he walks away, laughing out of the scene. The Reverend walks up to Duke and says, I've just heard about your son. My condolences. And Duke seems shook for a little second, but then he completely composes himself, just snaps right out of that grief straight away and asks the Rev about the window by saying, these windows, when were they put in? And the Rev says, you can think of windows at a time like this. And you know what? I'm on Team Rev right now. I'm thinking, your son is dead and you're looking at stained glass windows like some stained glass window pervert. Uh, we have Polaroids. Yeah, we know what you're doing with those Polar Polaroids. You're masturbating furiously. Um, Duke says, uh, just, uh, wh when were they put in? And the Reverend says, well, they were made and remade several times. The church was badly damaged in the 1860s. A lot of glass was lost or replaced. And um, Duke, continues to stare at the Reverend, like, perplexed, like, seriously confused, as if to say, is this guy shitting me? Uh, and the Reverend says, it's a bit of a jigsaw puzzle. It wasn't a very good job. And it's a jigsaw puzzle, so it's like PCs and PCs. So, like, the order being all mixed up, it totally works in this movie, and I feel vindicated. Uh, Dilt looks around the room, and the Reverend says, some fragments were... And he kind of starts to trail off, and then it clicks with him, that maybe there's something else going on here. And he looks at Dukes and says, this is not just academic, is it? And Dukes shoots back, you're damn right it isn't. That's right, we're just blaspheming right in this church. That thing killed my son. I stood there and watched him do it. And then the camera pans over, just in case you've forgotten, and we see Rawhead Rex's grr, grr, kind of cockeyed stained glass window thing. Um, and then it pans back to Duke, and Duke says, it's not human, that thing. If I was your friend Declan, I would say that it was... This thing was the devil. And the Reverend says, But you don't believe in the devil. And Duke says, No, I don't believe in the devil. But something started the rumour. Kind of love that line. It's, it's a cool line. This movie occasionally has bits of dialogue where I'm like, that's kind of rad. And then the rest is just like, what are we doing here? Um, Duke flips through his Polaroids before stomping off and examining one more closely. And then he runs, like, inexplicably to the back room and looks at another window. Uh, stares at it a second and says, I knew it. That's it. It just didn't fit. And the Reverend says, what? Duke runs back to the original window and he's holding up his pictures and he says, there's a missing piece. Look, look, look. This image, it doesn't fit here. But look there. Uh, there's one hand and there's the other one. And as he's doing that, we, the audience, get to see one of his Polaroids. And we see a picture of the stained glass in the other room. And inexplicably, there's a hand just totally out of place in the stained glass window. And it's holding a stone figure. And of course, the Reverend, like ourselves, is like, so? <laughs> and Duke says, this guy in the picture, I think he beat the creature once before. And the Reverend... Like, and once again, clunky dialogue. In fact, great dialogue. We're now getting clunky dialogue. He says, this is paganism. And Duke says, oh, well, you just look at it. It's as plain as the nose on your face. That's what I see. That's what killed my son. And that's what's out there right now, ready and waiting. And the Reverend says, please, you're distraught. I love this. Like, like the guy finally believes in the devil. And the priest is like, ah, come on. <laughs> like, maybe a wee bit far-fetched. Um, Duke says, God damn it, don't you humour me? So we're blaspheming twice, back to back, just like a, like an absolute heathen. Uh, and the Reverend says, Mr. Hallenbach, this is Christ's house. And Duke, getting his little jab in there, says, it wasn't always his, was it? And he walks out, and as he does this, the priest looks confused, and then he has the kind of, I've left my oven on, or did I lock the door before I left the house face? He walks over to the altar, and as he's walking over, there's loads of weird noises, including what sounds like bird sound. Once again, for no reason at all, must have been in the the sound guys like, like, like free CD of recorded sounds. Um, he goes across and he touches the cloth, and as he does, a red light covers his hand, and he's burned, and he looks intensely confused. 
Meanwhile, we transition over to a caravan park at night and we are through the POV of Rawhead Rex. We know that because we can hear his heavy breathing. Inside the caravan, there's an old man regaling stories over a beer. And he says, We couldn't see much, of course, even with the torches, but I had a pretty good idea of what was going on. In the room, next to him, there is an older woman knitting, and sitting opposite him, there is a quote-unquote younger couple who look like they've had the hardest paper rounds in the existence of man. The younger woman, quote unquote, says, what was that? And the old man says, smeared to blood. And the younger man says, really? The younger man actually looks older than the older man. And the old man says, certainly, it had a coppery smell about it. You couldn't miss it. Um, I'll go on, go on, go on, go on. That's me just slipping into horrible Father Ted impressions. Um, there's another woman in the background. She literally has nothing to do with this scene that we're watching just now. And maybe in the next five minutes gets a little bit more of something to do. But at the moment she's just sitting there and she's the odd one out. She's actually made an effort and dressed up for this caravan evening of beer and, and, and tales of death. Um, as this is happening though, and the old man's taking a drink, Rawhead Rex just totally passes the window and looks and like, Hello! And uh, the, the younger man catches a quick glimpse and says, Jesus, what was that? And the younger woman shushes him, which, I mean, is disrespectful. And she says, go on. And the old man says, then, of course, we found the body. And then there's a roar outside. The caravan starts rolling from side to side. They're screaming inside. We get an exterior shot of Rawhead Rex rocking that caravan. Ladies and gents, you know what they say. If the caravan is a rocking you don't come a knocking. That is the end of our five minute scene. A lot of dialogue, a slight glimpse of the monster, no death. Uh, so, both the double Duncan scenes here, no death. Uh, unlike the pieces and pieces, no random shots of kung fu either. Feel disappointed. Feel like the randomizer cheated me out of this. Now, like I said in the introduction, the ordering of this is all over the place. So I genuinely don't know where it's going to land. This might be the first episode you're hearing. This might be the last episode. This may be somewhere in between. But I hope you're having fun enjoying Raw Head Rex in Pieces. We will be doing this with another movie in December. So I'll be picking a Christmas themed horror movie and running the same gauntlet on that. That is 100% happening. Um... Yeah, I'm, I'm having a ball with this. These are so much fun to do. So all that is left for me to say is thank you very much for the support on these episodes. Hopefully you're having a great October and consuming plenty of horror movies and candy because that's that's mandatory. And uh, I will speak to you, ladies and gents, next time.